Hello, welcome to another tutorial from Moo ICT. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, fighter jet shooting game uh, similar to the one that we have on the website. So the pictures used in this one is a little from the website and I'll show you how to get them in a minute. So let's just go over the preview of what we're going to be making. So if I shoot, basically you're able to shoot up at the enemies and they're coming down towards you uh, you also have a way to keep score show the end message and then also restart the game so we're going to be making something slightly different in the tutorials so i can still shoot him Let's see so also once you get to a score 10 the enemy should speed up slightly not to make the game too difficult but just to make it a bit more challenging okay uh, so we're going to do the coding all the way uh, from the ground up so hopefully you guys will enjoy this tutorial and uh, let's get started on it all right, uh, the first part is uh, download the images from Muay City website so the links is here once you get to that you can extract the images so you have a blue image you have the enemy and the player image on there uh, the written tutorials are already online so you can check out how to do this one if you fall behind we're going to do it slightly different than uh, what we've done before in, on the website because obviously I've um, changed it up a little bit so it's a lot easier to read, uh, especially the code and everything else. Okay, uh, so let's just go and make a new project. Okay, create a Windows Form project again. Okay, so let's call this one Shooting Game. CT, click create. So I'm using the Windows Form.NET framework uh, in Visual Studio 2019. You can use any version to follow along. So I'm just going to move this one away. So it's not in the way of things. All right. So first thing first, uh, let's go and change the title to the game. Okay, so that's just the title. So when it runs, it just doesn't say form one or something generic like that. All right, um, we're gonna go change the background color of this one. All right, so it looks like a plain sky. Okay, so we're gonna need about five picture boxes. So let's go add those up first. So I'm just gonna hold control and drag so these can be our three enemies that can be the bullet and that will be the player okay so let's start naming them so start with this one first this is going to be enemy one with capital o this is going to be enemy two and then this will be enemy three This one's going to be bullet. And this is the player. Okay, so we're just going to go import the picture. So if you just right click on enemy, so click on enemy one, right click on, on it, and then say choose image. We're going to import everything into the project resource file so we can use it on the other one. So we can just highlight all and click open. So because it's the enemy, I'm going to go and choose the enemy there. If I click on enemy two, choose enemy on that one as well. If I click on enemy three and then choose enemy as well. I'm just gonna choose the bullet for this one. Okay, don't worry about, um, you see how that pictures are showing up now. Don't worry about that just yet because I'm gonna show you how to fix that very quickly. And that's the player. So uh, these pictures are resized to this game and obviously so we don't have to do stretch image on them so we can select all of them so if I um, select one hold shift and then click on each of them just to make sure I choose all the picture boxes and if you go to the properties window you'll see that there's a size mode option here so we can go to size mode and then say auto size so what's that going to do is that's going to auto size the picture boxes to the image that's inside of it That's that it's already looking good uh, we need a label so let's add a label to this so first thing I'm going to do to the label is I'm going to turn auto sizing off because we want to manually size this to width to width 
because we want the text to be centered on the screen and then obviously when the game um, ends we're going to add some more text to here as well so this can we can name this one txt score and send this to the back in a minute so, <coughs> so this is just going to say zero here in the text change the font size to a lot bigger so say 24 so we can see the zero there and then we've got the text align instead of top left we're going to make it to the middle here so we can make it a lot bigger uh, one other thing to remember is to all make sure you send this one to the back because it has a background color attached to it so when the enemies are going to come down you'll see that it goes behind the label so we need to make sure that this stays so it's sent to the back and then that way the enemies picture boxes will stay in the um, on top of it okay so that's pretty much done we need a timer so that's going to be the main thing that makes the game work so let's come here and change this to game timer change the interval to 20 but we also need to add an event so click on the little lightning bolt icon here and say game game timer event okay so that's the event that we have added so this is the c sharp script that's relative to this project only so it's relative to the form one if you see right there and there's your project name right there as well okay so make sure you save it as frequently as you can uh, now we're going to go and if you click on the form we're going to go and add a key down and a key up event so key is down inside the key down part and then type in key is up <laughs> the key up part all right so <coughs> there's the three events added now we're going to make two functions we're going to say reset game and um, private void game over <coughs> okay so there's our three there's the main timer event key down event key up event game reset function and then game over function all right so game reset function is what's going to sort of um, set everything up for us in the game and then game over function is the one that when it runs when the enemy has left the scene okay so it's time to go add the variables let's do that now okay we're going to group some of the variables together so that way we can kind of work around them without having to deal with too much stuff so let's go and make the booleans for ourselves first so uh, the player is only going to be moving left and right so we're going to go to go left go right so i'm still declaring the boolean so as long as it's all the same data type i can declare them in one line i'm also going to have a boolean for shooting and also going to have one for is game over okay so by default all of these are going to be set to false so all right now it's time to go and set a few integers so int score int player speed int uh, enemy speed and uh, bullet speed and then obviously we're going to have another random which is new random okay uh, let's set the player speed to 12 for here okay uh, we can set the rest of them inside the reset function so that's fine so for now let's go and set up the key down okay so inside the key down function we're gonna have if project was keys dot left then we can say go left is equals to true so that is if the um left key is pressed we're gonna change it to true Oop. made a bigger mess than i needed to to right then we can say go right is equals to true here so we're setting the booleans from false to true so these are these two guys here okay 
copy and paste is going to be weird if we type it. We're just going to change this back to false. So if those keys are released, we're going to change them to false. Okay, so that's that done. Um, so they need to go into the reset. Okay, so. All right, so let's go to the main timeline. Then we're going to set up the player movement first, and then we're going to go and set up the rest. So now, if I can say go left is true, right? So which it is when that key left is here, and we're going to make sure that the player dot left is greater than zero, so the player doesn't leave the scene from this side. So he has to stop here. Okay. Right, so if that's the case, then only then we're going to say player dot left is minus equals player speed. So we're going to move it. So as long as it's greater than zero, so as long as it's here, then we can move it this way. Okay. Now we have to do that thing for the right. <coughs> oh, again. So if go right is equal to and player dot left is less than in this case because we want it to stay inside the boundaries. So let's go find out how far is this. Uh, there's an option called locations on here, and then you can find the x and y location. So we got about 688. So we want the player to stay within 688 pixels from the left. If it is, that's great. Then we can say plus equals player speed. Okay, so if you want to try this out now, um, obviously we can't because we haven't um, enabled the timer or the reset function. So first thing in the reset function is going to be game. Oh, no. no. We didn't name the timer. Oh, I misspelled it. So it's spelling game timer, I spelled it to something else. So, so enable to false, that's fine. So game timer. We can say start, so that will start the game timer here, but we still need to call this function. So we can go to reset game right here. So this is your main constructor, so that's going to run when the program loads. So it's a good idea to start that right there. So now we should be able to move the player left and right, hopefully. Let's see if that works. Okay, so all right, the player moving left stops move right and stops okay so i can't go anywhere other than this that's perfect okay so this is the so we can play movement logic starts okay so i'm just going to group these together here that way we know where it starts and ends from. Okay, we need to add a few more bits to it. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's see if the score equals score dot two string. And then oh, dot text. So this is going to show us the score. So inside the timer it will link to the score, so if the score is one, two, three, four, one, whatever that's that should be fine. Okay, and then we're gonna show that there. So we can say here enemy one dot top. So this is us moving the enemy one downwards towards the screen. Enemy two dot top plus equals. We have three different enemies. We can move them with the one speed, but we will randomize where they spawn <coughs> in the beginning of the game. Okay, what we also want to do is, let's say for example, if the enemy has reached to the bottom of the screen, we want to run the game over function. So enemy one dot top is greater than 650, let's say. So how big is the form size? Um, no, seven hundred. 
run the game all the function here we also have to do it all so if you do the two pipe sign right that would basically if we want the same result from different conditions so if this condition is met we can run this one and then we can look for another condition so that would possibly give us the same result so we can group them together and run it inside of one if statement okay so this is going to check whether the enemies have left the scene if they have then we can stop the game all right so right now it's not going to do anything so we just let's just start it up now and see what it does okay so right now the enemies are not moving because the enemy speed has not been set yet so inside the reset function let's say enemy speed is equal to six for now You see they are coming down, go down, and gone. Function now, so the enemies are left equals. So this is where the random uh, number generator that we created is going to come handy. So we can generate a random number between two separate numbers. So we will want to have between 20 and 60 so it's going just going to randomly select one number between the two and then it's going to set it to the enemy one left now we'll do the same thing to enemy two and then enemy three okay so we also want to set the enemy one dot top to a random number as well um, this here is going to get a little bit tricky um, i'll show you how to solve this so basically what happens is um, the random number generator cannot generate anything in the negative so what we want to do is we want um, the enemies to spawn outside of the form so then they can come down from there okay so if i show you an example if I go to the location here and then in the y if I type in let's say for example minus 100 right so that's gone over there I don't know if you can see the lines that are showing up there so that's going to minus 100 there right so obviously anything that goes beyond that it goes to a minus because the zero and zero is location is right here so what we need to do here now is with the number generated we can times it by a minus one so what that will do that will generate a number that will be a positive number multiply that by a minus one and then it will become a neg negative number okay so we move that top uh, we're going to do the same for oopsie this one uh, this one could be like 500 maybe okay minus one <coughs> Between zero and nine hundred times minus one. So, right, so if we start the game now, we should be able to see. Okay, so as you can see, they've come from sort of random locations, so we don't know exactly where they're going to spawn. All right. This is the reset function and we can set the score to zero bullet speed back to zero here oh, and to the left so we're going to set the bullet away from the stage so when the bullet is um we are only going to be using one bullet in the in the game so unless um once you have shot it, unless it leaves the scene or hits an enemy, you can't shoot again. So when the bullet is inside the scene, you shouldn't be able to shoot again. You should be only able to shoot once. Okay, so um, all right, so for that, we're only using the one bullet picture. 
Okay, so we're going to set that one away from the scene, so it's going to be away there somewhere, so it doesn't look like it's there. So once you, only once you're shooting, it's going to come and spawn right on top of the player. Okay, um, let's go reset the school. Okay, and then obviously that would do. Okay, we've got, we already set the enemy speed there. That's perfectly fine. Change that to game over. So we can change the boolean to false that the game is not over. Oh, sorry, no, this is going to be true. So, yeah, so once this function runs, the game is over at this point. We can stop the timer and then show the score, show the last message on the score. So we can do a plus equals to this text right now. And then we'll do environment new line. Oop. Keep doing that today. Plus, so in the new line, we're gonna first gonna say game over. Do a plus again. Do a plus, and then right here say. Let's do a semicolon here. Okay, so right under the score is gonna show game over first and then it's gonna say press enter to try again. Okay, so let's see if that works. Alright, now the bullets gone, enemies are moving, and then it's perfect. So at the moment if I press enter, nothing happens. Maybe we haven't programmed that in just yet. So let's do that first. So let's do the shooting one first and then we can go and sort out the reset scene. Can't even type. <laughs> okay, shooting false to false. Alright, so what we're doing here is uh in the key up, we're gonna check. So we don't wanna do in the key down. We're gonna do that when the space is released, we're gonna check if that space button is pressed and if the shooting Boolean is false. So, you know, you haven't shot at this point. So if you already have shot it, then obviously we're gonna have to um, cancel this, right? So uh, if the bullet is already in the scene, this part of the code is not going to run. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change shooting back to true because it's, it would be false at this point, right? And then we're going to set the bullet. So bullet dot top equals player. Player dot top. So I need to figure out how what's the size of this thing is. So it's 27. So height is 27, all right? Come on. Plus, let's say 30. So that way it spawns right here. Instead of on the player, it'll spawn here. Okay, so I'll move it a bit there. And bullet dot left. I forgot how we're setting this. Player yeah, dot left. Plus, so we're gonna wanna set it in the middle of the player. So player the width times two. So it's gonna calculate the width of the player object, and it's gonna place it right in the middle of it. Okay, so if we go try that now, so I'm gonna press space. So it's like it's gone behind it instead. Oops, sorry, I think that needs to be minus instead of plus. Okay, so there you go. So it gets placed right on top of the player. Excellent. Okay, now let's do the end part. So if so this part of the function is only going to run if the game over 
and boolean is true okay which it will be every time the game over function runs it's going to be true so whenever it is we are going to run the reset function here okay because the reset function has all of the um, default settings for the game so you get the enemy speed back to default the locations are going back to default the score the bullet speed everything so now we can take a look at how this works so we can go press the bullet in now if i press enter everything goes away and we go back to and the default section however i don't think uh, we missed one thing here we haven't set shooting back to false. That's why I can get the bullet back. Okay, so if I try that now. Okay, bullets there. Press enter again. Now, okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so now let's work inside the timer. Let's make some space inside the timer. We're going to move the bullet and then we'll set up so when the when he hits the enemy or when he um sorry when he hits the enemy or when he does uh, when he leaves the scene it needs to go and reset itself okay so in here we're going to check first if shooting is equals equals true right so we're going to set the bullet speed to 20 and then bullet dot top is going to be minus equals bullet speed so that is once we hit space and obviously when the um, boolean is true we assign a value to the bullet integer and then move the bullet according to what that is okay we also need to put an else here so if that is false right we don't want the bullet to be on the scene Okay, so we want the bullet on left to stay at minus 300. So it needs to stay off the scene. Okay, so we also need to say if, another if here, so the bullet dot top is less than say minus 100, no, sorry, minus 30 or something like that, because it's very small. So we need it to go all the way there. Then we can just say bullet, uh, sorry, shooting. <coughs> is equals to false. Okay, let's set the bullet speed back to zero here. So if the sh shooting is not happening, it's going to go back into zero. <coughs> okay, let's try that out to see how that works. Okay, so now if I'm shooting, the bullet leaves, I should be able to shoot again. Okay, so I think for now, we're going to just comment out the game over part. So I don't want them to, when I'm testing it out. So, okay, I can shoot one bullet, shoot another one. So as long as it's in the scene, I can't shoot another bullet. So I can shoot until it leaves the scene on the top. Okay, also I can't move anywhere. Okay, it'd be a very boring game without the enemies. But let's go and find a way to bring them back. We need to figure out the way to collide <coughs> with the enemies. Let me uncomment that in a minute. Okay. So the bullet is going to collide with each enemy. So in Visual Studio Windows Form, we have something called bounds dot intercept with right. So this like a sort of collides with another object. So it looks for the boundary of that this one object, whether it is overlapping with this one here. So if it is, then we can this condition will be true. Right. So if it is, then first thing we need to do is we need to increase one. For the score, enemy one dot top is going to get reset to say minus four hundred and fifty. So we're just going to reset it to another location. One dot left. We need to do a 
random.next. So now this is going to be between 20 and 600 as we did before. And we also got to change shooting to false. Okay. So if the bullet is colliding with enemy one, we add one to the score. We move the enemy object to off the board so it can come back down again. Give you a random left and right so it doesn't uh, it doesn't spawn exactly where it was before, and then we change shooting back to false, right? So we'll do this again. So after copying them, we're going to change this to enemy two. as well um, we can spawn him slightly further back 650 enemy two here as well and enemy three three again three again right so we're gonna we can spawn this one about 750 so 100 back Right, so these are the bits for colliding with the enemy. So we got enemy one, two, and three. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's see if we can shoot them now. So we can shoot that one. The score is increasing as well, and they come back. Okay, because as soon as it hits, it resets that location for the enemy, and then they will come back to it. Okay. Right, so that's how the enemies are hitting with the bullet right now. So we need to figure out how to increase the speed. So if the score goes, let's say for example, score is equals to 10, so we can increase the speed of the enemy so it makes the game slightly more difficult. So we can say here if oh, score is equals equals 10 so because the enemies all three of the enemies are being controlled by that one variable we can change this uh, change the number inside of this one and that would in return increase the speed of them coming towards the player okay so if you remember we added these three so these three are exactly the same and obviously they are assigned to all the three enemy picture boxes Alright, so let's go and score 10. Let's see how that works out. Let's go to... Okay, so let's see this speed up. Okay, so we missed one, that's fine. So what you can do also is if you want to have um, them speed up periodically, so you can have it to set to say, if you have them score equals to five, you speed it up and then you can also do another if statement here. Now if score is equals equals 10, right? So you can set enemy speed to say 15. Okay, so if somebody's um, survived long enough with this speed and then obviously give them a bit more challenge on the next one so instead of going to all the way to 10 we can speed it up at 5 now and then we can let's see if I can actually score up to 10 oh I did it nice ah. okay so that does get really fast but it's good it gives you a bit more challenge on playing the game okay so we need to now uncomment this so the game over function will run when the planes leave okay so so let's say game over All right. let's see everything's gone back to normal again right, let's see if I lose it again scores back down all right. Oh, oh wow. OK, 
Okay, it does get challenging. All right, so that's the fighter jet game tutorial. Hopefully, uh, uh, this is helpful to you. And then I will see you on the next one.